that Sabbath day, Jesus appeared in the synagogue as it was his custom. And it must have been a very exciting, quiet group that listened to Jesus. Because they had heard, even though it was just at the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, what had happened in his life, and perhaps they had heard about his baptism by John the Baptist. Perhaps they had heard about the temptation of 40 days in the, in the desert. Perhaps they had heard all of that, and maybe not. Because Jesus had returned to his home. Let's think about it, what that would be like for you. Now, if you're from a bigger city, it's maybe not quite the same, but if you're from a smaller town, you're from Nazareth, people know you. People knew Jesus. And they had heard about this son of their town, of their neighborhood. They had heard that unusual things were happening. Unusual things as far as healing and as far as speaking and sharing. Wisdom that seemed beyond what they had ever heard before. Jesus stood up as was the custom for those that would read from the scroll. And he opened up the scroll of Isaiah, and as was read to us by, the, by I believe it was Grace, by the children in the children's message, this is what he read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Now these words were written by Isaiah 700 years before these words were talking about the Messiah. These words were talking about the Christ to come. And Jesus was reading them. Because he has appointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This was the year of the Lord's favor. More than this was the year of the Lord's favor, this was the time when the promised Messiah was standing there before them. And our theme text follows up with this. So let's take a look at our theme text. Then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And he said to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in front of you. And so what Jesus was saying was, I am the promised Messiah, the Christ that Isaiah shared 700 years ago that would, that would come. And all the things that would come with this Messiah. Now, let's back up just a little bit. I believe uh, my mic is only halfway working. So let's go to this. I'd like to take a look at the country that Jesus was in, okay? And the country that he was in, the map that we're going to see is, is what we refer to now as Israel, or refer to I think we're going to see. I, I was now referred to as Israel. And Jesus had been, now this is a little far away, but you see what is on your left. That's the Mediterranean Sea. And you see the water that's way down on the close to the bottom. And that's the Dead Sea. And you see the next, the next lake or next sea up, and that's the Sea of Galilee. Now Jesus had been down closer to the, the, the Dead Sea, down to the bottom. That's where Jerusalem is at. And Jesus at there had been baptized just across the Jordan River. That's the river running into the Dead Sea. And after he was in, after he was baptized, he went to your right, which is the desert. Okay? And there he spent 40 days. Then he came out of the 40 days and went back to his hometown of Nazareth, which is way up by the Sea of Galilee. Now, it's not a large country. For us, it's not even the size of a state for us in the United States. But yet, he would travel, he would walk through it, 
three years is what his ministry was. And so it's important that we see the geography behind what he was saying. He was also coming just in the beginning of his ministry. The very first thing that was happening, the very first converts were coming to him. The very first people to be healed were coming to him. Now what he was talking about, or what he referred to, was Isaiah. And Isaiah lived in this same country only 700 years before. And so we'll take a look at Isaiah's country, Isaiah's Israel, and we'll put up a different map as we work on that. But what I want to show you is that in the book of Isaiah, over 200 years of the history of Israel were covered. So when it first starts out, Isaiah is speaking to a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom, and then the northern kingdom is taken away by Assyria. In the, in the next weeks ahead, we will have more information about this, this captivity. We will also have more information about this threat of Assyria. Assyria also then came back. If you see the lines, you see the direction, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to interpret the, the map. The Mediterranean Sea is over on your left. And uh, what is Israel is called Samaria and Jerusalem. <coughs> And then way over to the right is Babylon, Babylonia, and Assyria is way up on the north. That were, they, those were the enemies. Okay? Those were the enemies. Now, Isaiah was speaking from his heart, being inspired by the Holy Spirit, giving this information, this information which, which then Jesus would take. As we look at this entire passage that Jesus and the passages before and, and, and around uh, the reading of the section from Isaiah. Let's take a look at that. This comes from Luke chapter 4, verse 16 and 21. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue of the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found a place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me. What was it like to be sitting in that audience, to hear those words, to know that they were coming from Isaiah, and to know that there was significance beyond just the words. The significance was that Jesus was reading those words. To proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. As he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and he rolled up the scroll. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Today, the scriptures has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now, in that reading of Isaiah, there is so much promise. Put a hold on that promise. We're going to look at that right away. There's so much hold on that promise. Let's talk about the reaction of what you might have to somebody who is standing in front of you and saying words that simply indicated, that not simply, but indicated that he was Jesus Christ that he was the promised Messiah. And so you might expect how then the people in the synagogue, the devout Jewish people in the synagogue reacted. They reacted by saying that they were amazed at his wisdom, amazed at how he could, could convey himself, his approach, the words he chose. But then they said, isn't his father Joseph? Isn't his father Joseph? And then if you're reading along in the scriptures, you'll see that Jesus said, he came right back and he said, you're probably going to quote the proverb that says, physician, heal your own. And he said, and then Jesus said, don't you know that anybody that goes back to his home town, his home country, is not going to be shown respect. And then he gives them a double whammy. He says, and he said, in the Old Testament, two of your prophets, Elijah and Elisha, 
They both were called to perform miracles, and the miracles that they performed, one of them was providing a widow with food during a drought. Day after day after day, oil and flour was there by a miracle. And also the other prophet, first was Elisha, then first was Elijah, then Elisha. Elisha then was, was uh, given this wonderful, uh, wonderful miracle that he was to perform, and he was to perform taking leprosy away, not from an Israelite, not from a good Jewish person who knew Jehovah and who worshiped and who followed the rules, but he was a Gentile, like you and me. The crowd that heard these words from Jesus got very disturbed, very angry, sought to kill him, grabbed him, or wanted to grab him, and throw him off the hill. But yet, miraculously, and Jesus is true God, true man, miraculously, Jesus did not die that day. The anger was there. The timing was not. And so let's take a look at that timing and what was happening and what was going to happen as far as what Isaiah had said and what then Jesus read from Isaiah. Take a look at the text from Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, that Jesus was quoting. It says this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring, bring good news to the poor. He has set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all who mourn. This was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. This was at, at just after he was baptized, just after he had spent 40 days, 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by, by Satan. And as he was being tempted by Satan, he had an answer for each temptation. He went back to the scriptures and rebuked Satan with the scriptures himself. Just as he is using scriptures now to authenticate who he is and what was going to happen in this ministry that is ahead in the next three or two and a half or three years that he was going to spend in this country that we've taken a look at on the map, both in Nazareth and, and of course around Jerusalem where he spent so much of his ministry. Now what did he do? If you look at the words of Isaiah, he brought good news, he healed those that were brokenhearted, he proclaimed liberty, he gave freedom, he opened prisons, he proclaimed the year of the Lord's favor, and he comforted all who mourn. As we have amongst us, I guess all of us, have things which we mourn. But certainly there are some of us where the morning is much, much closer. And so Jesus heals. Now the year of the Lord is really interesting. The year of the Lord was a command by Jesus, excuse me, command by God, to, for the Jerusalem nation, that every 50 years, every 50 years, all debts were forgiven. All land would go back to the original owners. All people who were enslaved would be free. So what Jesus was saying at this particular time, when he said, today the scriptures are being fulfilled, was that I am here to do all of these things and to give you total freedom. Total freedom from the sin that you have, total freedom from all of the things that are bothering you, total freedom from the, the illnesses that you have, if not in this world, certainly in that world to come. So here you are. Jesus has just said that, and you're sitting out, and you're a good, you know, you're a good Pharisee. You've been keeping the rules. You've been doing things that you have been told that if you keep those rules, that'll get you there. And now this man, this son of Joseph, is coming up, and he is saying, I am the Messiah. What would your reaction be? Is he Lord? 
Is he the Lord? Or is he a lunatic? Or is he a liar? Let's take a look. So we put ourselves in the place of those that hurt him that day. And we think of the challenge that is in front of us. Now I would gather and would believe and would think that yes, we believe that he is the Lord. But as we look at our actions, as we look at what is it that we do in his name, what is it that we do in serving him, what is it that we do in reaching out to the poor, in reaching out to those who are suffering. It is not so much a law, although it is, it's not so much that we should be driven by law, but rather that we should be driven by the hope that we have and by Jesus giving us, this is the day of the Lord. And this is the day of the Lord is when we have that freedom, that total understanding that Jesus has died for us. And as our response, we look for those ways that he is leading us and guiding us. So three things. Three things. So first of all, as you tonight or when you have an opportunity, you think about this question that is in front of you, this question is he Lord and am I treating him as Lord or am I somewhere in between? Yes, Lord, but somewhere in between. And you can't go to that somewhere in between because if you go that somewhere in between, that's making him a liar or a lunatic. And our Lord is not a liar. So what he was saying at this particular time, you know, you ask that question, what, why, why did he do this? Why did he say right to the people that were there that could have said, oh, this is nice. Explain this a little bit more, Jesus. And he says, well, you know, uh, this is something that I've read from Isaiah, and I have been compelled to, to teach this and talk about it. Isn't this nice? But no, he did. He said, in their face, you're not going to listen to me because I am from your own country. And you are just like the people of the Old Testament that didn't listen to the prophets that were sent by the Lord. And they got angry, and they were ready to kill him. So number one, where is that Lord in our hearts? Where is he? And number two, number two, how, what do we care about how people react to us being in the right place at the right, you know, feeling good about where we are, may, being approved by the people around us? Sure, that is very important. And I would say for much of my life that was high, maybe the highest priority. But it is only, it is only good and honest if you are you, what you know and what you believe as far as the Lord is your Lord. And number three, number three is where is God leading you? I don't believe it's by accident that we're here. Not in this life, not in this day. So where is God leading you? And you say, well, I've been asking. <laughs> and yes, we do ask, don't we? And we pray, and we think about it, and we go to the Word, and go to the Scripture, and we want them to hear we then want to hear those words, that direction, that understanding. Yes, Lord. And sometimes it's just a step, and the step feels good, and so we take another step, and the step, two steps feel good, and we take the third step, and we say, oh, I see, Lord. I see. So, this is the year of the Lord. This is the year which we celebrate the wonderful life that we have. This is the year that we know that the Lord Jesus is our Christ, our Messiah. Not only is this the year, but this is the moment. In Jesus' name.